Thanks, Jeff. Now, another buzzword in the latest news is ransomware. You heard Jeff say it a couple of times. And I think the majority of us will recognize this word from the latest and most widespread ransomware attack, WannaCry, that affected millions of people all over the world, which Jeff will touch on a bit later. And as previously stated, we have seen a record spike in cybercrime activity involving ransomware. Now, Jeff, help us explore this phenomenon by analyzing the trends. Well, thank you very much for bringing me to this. This is something I'd love to talk about. You heard me mention it before, and that's the scary topic of ransomware. Um, it's not the theft of your information necessarily, but when your, your information is actually held hostage, and it's often from your own systems or computers or devices, during 2016, ransomware was one of the most significant threats facing both individuals and organizations. And in 2016, attackers seem to have nearly perfected the ransomware business model. They're using strong encryption and Bitcoin payments and vast spam campaigns to create dangerous and wide-ranging malware. Uh, what's, what's more worrisome is that the number of new ransomware families is increasing. And this signals that more and more cyber criminals are actually getting involved. It's attractive to them. In fact, if you listen to the website Security Brief Threat Briefing, which Angelique and I host every month on one of these Semantic Bright Talk channels, you're going to see how nation states might be including ransomware in their arsenals. Governments are getting into ransomware. Now, consumers in particular bear the brunt of 69% of all uh, ransomware infections, but this year saw evidence that ransomware attackers may be branching out and developing even more sophisticated attacks like targeting ransomware on businesses. Those, those, those attacks involved initial compromise, then a network traversal, and that leads to encryption of multiple machines, business machines, not personal machines, but business computing power and therefore business data. There are literally hundreds of different ransomware families out there which are spread through a variety of methods, but the most active ransomware threats uh, seen in 2016 are usually spread by, you guessed it, the living off the land vector of email. We keep coming back to that. So what are the ransom demands of these attackers? First, know that ransom is very lucrative. There's money in it. Not only are the presence of attacks and the scope of these attacks on the rise, but so are the ransom amounts. The average ransom in 2016 was over three times the size of 2015's average ransom. Uh, what's worse is the, in, the increasing amounts of ransom that, uh, that happen if the payment isn't received by a certain deadline or if the victim is a business, not an individual. In fact, the highest ransom demand in 2016 was for a single machine, and it was nearly 30,000 US dollars. That's over 26 times the average ransom demand, and many suspect that attackers believe that victims can be squeezed for higher and higher ransoms. Uh, now, according to uh, research carried out by the Norton Cyber Security Insight Team, 34% of victims worldwide will pay the ransom. What's more, the percentage nearly doubles regarding ransomware victims in the United States of America. And this provides some indication as to why the USA is, as a country is so heavily targeted. Attackers have also become more creative in their attempts to extract more from victims. Uh, several newer ransomware family, families uh, feature variable ransom demands, including raising ransom amounts as time elapses, lapse, as I mentioned. Uh, for example, the Cerber ransomware will double its ransom demand from uh, about $3,400 to nearly $6,800 US dollars just after five days if the ransom is not paid. Uh, there are now hundreds of, of different ransomware families, and they're spread through a variety of methods, but the most active ransomware threats seen in 2016 were, you guessed it again, spread by email, again, living off the land. And while ransomware attacks to date have been largely indiscriminate, there's evidence that attackers have a growing interest in hitting organizations, businesses with targeted attacks. Because although it's rel relatively small in number compared to the mass mailed threats, these can be devastating for organizations which are affected because there's potentially of hundreds of computers affected at, encrypted and affected by, at once. And why? Because businesses offer have big, often have bigger pockets than individuals do. Their budgets are bigger, their bank accounts are bigger. 
So of course, if you're looking for evidence of ransomware, there was no more prominent demonstration of it than last month's attack of the ransom, the WannaCry ransomware, which now has the title of not just the biggest ransomware attack ever, but the biggest cyber attack ever. WannaCry searches for and encrypts 160, 176 different file types and appends a certain uh, extension, .wcry, to the end of the file name. It then asks users to pay a $300 US ransom, but do so in Bitcoin. The ransom note indicates that the payment amount will be doubled, like I said earlier, after three days. Four days after that, if the payment is still not claimed, the the WannaCry uh, malware uh, claimed that the encrypted files would be deleted. We haven't seen much evidence of that. Nevertheless, as you see on the screen, hundreds of thousands of computers across 150 countries worldwide were hit by WannaCry during its rapid emergence uh, beginning on Friday, May 12th. What you see on the screen is time slices 12 hours apart as it spread and reached critical mass in certain parts of the world. Look at the most populous countries. Look at the most, um, the most developed countries. Look at the so-called developing countries of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and how quickly they got hit.